Natural History of the Sea, Chapter 1. Jawfish are members of an order called Perciforms and rarely leave their sandy burrows. The jawfish lives on open sand. Snappers also belong to the order of Perciforms. They are mostly nocturnal and generally feed. Lionfish are known for. It's a bad day for prey. The sea is treacherous. An edible fish won't last 10 meters here just now. So, let's turn our attention to the creepy monsters. The scene of these terrifying events lies by the tropical Southeast Asian islands, more precisely just off the northern tip of Sulawesi, in the strait that separates Sulawesi from the small island of Lambe. Lambe Strait harbors an exceptional variety of creatures. Nowhere else in the Earth's oceans do we know of a place quite like this with so many different and rare species assembled in one spot. This exceptional variety is most likely due to the strait's protected location, where waves barely ruffle the sea. and a constant current supplies a steady source of tasty plankton. No one here cares about marine creatures. Beyond that, they make fine seafood. Whale sharks and manta rays once passed through the Lambay Strait, but they were long since overfished and have disappeared. However, while no one noticed them, the creepy monsters stayed. And for the past 20 years or so, they've been attracting recreational divers to the port city of Betong, an area previously untouched by tourism. Scuba diving here requires enthusiasm, patience, and an instinct for those treasures that don't reveal themselves at first glance. The dive sites are rarely more than 20 meters deep. Visibility is only fair, and the water appears more greenish than blue. Large tracts of the underwater scenery are covered with lava sand and garbage. But the underwater critters quickly put these souvenirs of civilization to their own use. Anything that offers structure or shelter in the sandy grounds is taken advantage of, lived in by octopuses and fish and overgrown by other marine life. For about the past 15 years, this fascinating world has been explored not only by locals, but visitors from distant countries too, like Austria, home of the veterinarians Claudia and Manfred Hochleitner. In their quest for places off the beaten track, they first arrived here many years ago. They got to know and love the Lambay Strait 
and have since spent hundreds of hours underwater with their video camera. The fascination in, in this region and why we did it here is because uh, there is a high number of animals which you hardly find in any other place in the world. And this was so fascinating for us. The first step was to find them and to see them and to be able to film them. Then we realized that if you spend more time with an individual uh, animal, you have a higher chance to see them interacting with you sometimes or interacting with the surrounding and other animals. We, we had the uh, impression that not only we watched uh, the uh, creatures down there, they also investigated us. Every dive brought them face to face with the new miraculous creatures. One of the things which fascinated me most was that there are so many animals down there which are not identified at the moment. And we always thought all the animals which are in reachable distance, like, I mean, it's not in 50, 60 meters, it's in 10, 15 meters. Really, every diver can do. Uh, you find octopus, you find shrimp, you find uh, seahorses, which are non-identified species. Uh, this is something I never thought before that this is, is possible. Their patience has paid off. Just like their investment in video cameras that can film sea creatures that normally hide from the diver's gaze. An exciting new world of underwater film. What one doesn't see here at first is a gorgeously coloured sea slug, just a few millimetres long and barely visible to the naked eye. It's only the camera's macro lens that makes it visible to us. Thus, the two Austrians succeeded at introducing audiences to a previously unknown facet of the sea, the critters too small and well concealed to be noticed by most divers, but that are still worth spending hours underwater for. For the eye trained to follow tiny details, the desolate seeming sands of Lembe Strait offer up numerous treasures. Pygmy seahorses grow only about two centimeters long. Everything about them perfectly imitates the sea fan that shelters them for their entire lives. It's not only due to their smallness that it's easy to miss entire armies of animals, but also their masterful camouflage. The little fish in the open water attract considerable attention, but who would bother with a second or third look at the swaying sea anemones and soft corals? Can you see it? The filefish,
It moves with the rhythm of the soft corals as if it were a part of them. It's thought to feed on the corals as part of its diet too. Whether the corals benefit from the filefish is unknown. At first glance, there is nothing but soft coral. Then suddenly an eye appears, and then fins, and for a few moments, an entire fish. Persistence is rewarded. Whoever is patient enough and has enough compressed air to support that patience can win a coveted view of the sea's most curious creatures. Three ghost pipe fishes. A female on top and two males below her. The rest is decoration. The rival seems to get on the lover's nerves. The bigger animal measures no more than six centimeters. Ghost pipe fishes blend in with their surroundings. These here with a certain leaf alga. The females form a brood pouch with their ventral fins and carry the eggs with them until their young hatch. This octopus masters an even more astonishing trick. It changes its appearance in seconds. First a regular dark red jacket, and then a fringed gray one for camouflage. They can change not only the color of their skin, but its texture too. Whoever thinks it's easy to recognize an octopus probably hasn't encountered this tiny something cowering in the glare of the spotlights. Certainly one of the world's rarest octopuses and apparently still unknown to science. quaint, hairy creature. Passing itself off as a bundle of fibrous algae. Bobbing passively in the currents and tides. Like a lost seafarer. Lambe Strait harbors a teeming host of the bazaar, each stranger than the next, but all have one thing in common. They are discovered, if at all, only after an intense and dedicated search. What are some of the other strange creatures that may be encountered here? The sexy shrimp, for example. They live in anemones and are known for rhythmically shaking their rear ends. boxing crabs. They carry small sea anemones in their claws like boxing gloves and master the corresponding technique too. Occasional fancy footwork but mostly covering your weak spots above and a few jabs and hooks.
It's a partnership both species profit from. The crabs defend themselves with the anemone's poisonous tentacles and the anemones feed on the crab's leftovers. The coconut octopus is tired of the camera in its face. It folds up its fortress made of seashells, tucks it under its arms and trudges off. Carrier crabs pick up everything they can carry or make use of in some way. They wear their collections, clutch and tote them around using whatever they find for both camouflage and protection. Indeed, they carry so much that they have reassigned their last pair of legs as arms. They'll snatch up anything they can get their claws on, even live jellyfish, which throws every would-be crab-eater for a loop. sea urchin likely offers the best protection. Though considering its spines, a crab needs to be very careful how it carries its prize. What works for the crabs works for some sea urchins as well. Collector urchins snag everything they can for camouflage. And sometimes they even overestimate themselves a little. The divers are so intent on the sea's small prodigies that they almost overlook the larger ones. The big cuttlefish to the right can't hide its curiosity. Cuttlefish are mollusks that don't live in the open water like squid, but rather stick close to the ground. They can weigh several kilograms. What fascinates the cuttlefish so much about the divers remains unclear. Cuttlefish move mainly by means of a fin line that runs around their entire body. Like octopuses, cuttlefish are capable of sudden colour changes, not only for camouflage, but also to signal their moods of the moment. In this case, an equal measure of fear and curiosity. Divers apparently remain a sensation in Lembe's grey underwater world. But the number of divers is growing steadily here in the north of Sulawesi. The port city of Bitong still seems unaffected by tourism. It's mainly about passengers and freight. Although the provincial government is reported to have plans to develop the region as the most important tourist destination in the area after Bali. Bitong has 160,000 inhabitants. 
too big to take a break, even at night. Outside, it's not only the fishermen who are getting started with their work, but the underwater filmmakers too. Okay, see you. Night dives usually offer new perspectives on places whose daytime character is already well known. A school of eel tail catfish. The glare of the spotlights magically attracts sea creatures. Suddenly, the sea is full of bristle worms, rising in huge swarms to spawn. So many that filming becomes practically impossible. Piercing light shines down from above the surface too. It's a fisherman's propane lamps. He is using the same technique as the divers. The light attracts the fish that snap enthusiastically at the shiny, empty fish hooks. Tomorrow, they'll find themselves in the local fish market. In some areas, the light shines all the way to the sea floor, temporarily blinding a stargazer. Stargazers spend the majority of their lives in the sand. These creepy monsters hardly ever expose more than just their eyes, unless something really gets on their nerves. This rare sight is thanks to the tiresome sea urchins. And that's more than enough swimming for the next two weeks. But the sea urchin gang won't be shaken off that easily. As soon as the troublemakers are gone, the stargazer casts its fishing rod. A worm-like extension on its lower jaw serves as bait. The monster has a hard time swallowing. How big, or rather how small, the ghastly creature actually is, becomes clear when compared to the underwater camera lens. Many critters are most active at night a reef squid. The blaze of the spotlights keeps it spellbound. Then, it all just gets to be too much. While escaping, it discharges a cloud of ink, not to obscure an attacker's vision, but to distract it. The ink appears like a solid body in the water.
it vanishes, never to be seen again. A bobtail squid, just a few centimeters long. Bobtail squid, other squid, and cuttlefish make up the three main groups that compose the ten-armed cephalopods. Lambe Strait harbors almost everything. And then there is the walking flamboyant cuttlefish. Flamboyant cuttlefish appear massively built, but are only about six centimeters long. They are believed to be the only poisonous cuttlefish, but they are dangerous to humans only if eaten. Flamboyant cuttlefish place their eggs in holes or crevices, or half a coconut shell. The eggs, initially white, gradually turn transparent, revealing the young inside. After two to three weeks, they hatch. Whether traveling on foot or floating on the current, the newly hatched cuttlefish migrate to the deeper ocean before returning as adults to their shallow water birthplaces to leave their own clutches of eggs. The first rays of morning stretch over Lembe's hills. The fish market opens for business. The fishermen are returning from their night shift. Many come from only the next bay or two, but some from far out on the ocean. The catch is accordingly impressive. Fish any scuba diver in Lembe Strait would never get to see. In the past, much bigger, even gigantic fish are said to have been sold here. In the days, the sea wasn't exploited to its limits. It's not easy for a simple fisherman to earn a living. The creepy monsters that attract divers from around the world to Lembe are of little interest to the fishermen. However, that may change. Tourism may offset the shortfalls from fishing income. Some of the critters here are as unfamiliar as if they were from another planet. A sea slug, almost 30 centimeters long, and extremely dangerous to small fish and crabs. In contrast to other nudibranchs, this sea slug is not content with what it happens to find on the ground, but actively hunts. Another related species in stylish orange. It spares itself the effort of hunting, since its body, like those of many corals, 
harbors a thriving colony of microscopically small algae, providing sugar and starch. A somewhat sturdier alien. What's your best guess? It's a sea cucumber. What looks like feet are actually mouth tentacles the sea cucumber uses to pick up food. It's startled, most likely by the spotlights. Sea cucumbers have a tough, warty skin and are extremely muscular. They breathe with their multi-purpose intestines, from which they also squirt a water jet when in distress. Male and female sea cucumbers cooperate at a distance in order to breed. Right now, it's the male's turn. Somewhere, invisible in the dark, there must be a female. And with a little luck, the sperm will find an egg. Though not exactly aliens, the Bangai cardinal fish are still considered strangers. Originally from the Bangai Islands, more than 300 kilometers away, they've been known in this area only since 1999. Bangai cardinal fish are caught by the millions for the international aquarium fish trade. One of the shipment hubs used to be near Lambe, where they arrived in plastic bags. The area's most experienced dive guide, Iwan Ridwan Mohani, knows the whole story. They just brought from the sea and then just put it in a plastic bag and then they were bring into Pitong and then they just tried to make cleaning and then just put it to make a split to another plastic and then the other plastic was cut and then the cardinal fish fall into the water and then that's now is a lot of uh, cardinal fish in Lembe Strait. In their native habitat, the Bangai Islands, they inhabit an area of no more than 30 square kilometers, one of the geographically smallest ranges for a saltwater fish ever identified, which makes this new mass colonization all the more remarkable. Like other cardinal fish, they also practice mouth brooding. The males brood the eggs and protect the hatchlings. The role these newcomers play in the local ecosystem remains unexplored. So far, the native species seems to greet them as most welcome prey. One of the biggest beneficiaries seems to be the ribbon eel. Young ribbon eel are black, while adult males are bright yellow and blue. The gaping mouth suggests greed and aggression, but actually, it's just how ribbon eels breathe. Cardinal fish face death without fear. 
they don't seem to realize the danger. The sight of the unfamiliar ribbon eel doesn't trigger enough of an instinct to escape. It's as if the buffet is open and nobody fights over it. The ribbon eels have all the time they want to pick and choose in peace. Overfishing around the Bangai Islands dramatically reduced the cardinal fish stock. But here, in these foreign surroundings, even the numerous predators have no serious impact on the Bangai cardinal fish population. Although terrible, creepy monsters are lurking behind every corner. This monstrosity belongs to the frogfish family. Frogfish come in all colors, shapes and sizes. All of them use a kind of fishing rod that extends from the first dorsal fin and terminates in a flap of skin that looks like a worm or shrimp. Jiggled properly, this fake bait attracts prey that is swallowed up as a result. If the fish fails to react to the bait, the frogfish changes its strategy. It carefully creeps up on its victim. blink of an eye, the mouth opens and sucks in the frogfish's prey, no matter how big or spiky it may be. What's been hoovered up here is a dangerous scorpion fish. Despite its poisonous fin spines, it ends up in the frogfish's stomach and is completely digested within the next day or two. Frogfish won't stop at anything, not even lionfish. It's like a nightmare scenario. Godzilla chomping Dracula. These corpulent monsters also have their funny sides. In the foreground, a wee small male. In the background, a massive female full of eggs. The male senses that the lady is likely to consider mating before long, but for the time being, she treats herself to another lionfish.
tens of thousands of eggs bloating her and a fat meal to top it off. Now it's time to look for a comfortable resting place. Her smallish admirer still pines for his chances and follows her. Between her unwieldy girth and the underwater current, she's a bit wobbly. Although he is completely ignored, Runty refuses to be shaken off. Finally, a resting place comes into view. The supplicant maintains a bashful distance, a tactical mistake he'll soon regret. The female is exhausted, but still pervades the underwater world with her erotic glamour. Out of nowhere, another male appears. And he's not only bigger, but also more assertive and pushy. Sorry, not today, not before the lionfish is digested. All right, never mind, I'll accompany you home. There is no lack of bizarre creatures here, but not all of them are laid out on a platter. Some require sophisticated technology to track them down deep below the sand. This endoscope is designed for veterinarians to explore the intestinal loops of horses. A tiny camera is attached to a long cable that transmits the images to a monitor. And here are the freakish critters all this effort is about. Mantis shrimp, the fastest animal alive, and lethal. They grow up to 30 centimeters long and are rarely seen outside their burrows. In the safety of their dugouts, they turn into malignant trappers. While hunting, they get their bearings with the help of their unique sense of vision. They see colors much better than humans and even register ultraviolet light and polarized skylight. Lashing out, their claws reach a speed of more than 80 kilometers per hour most likely the fastest action in the animal world. Their strikes are frequently observed by divers. But what happens below the sand? So far, all explorations to find out have failed. While trying to dig the shrimp out, everything collapses. Now, the endoscope offers the very first glimpse into a mantis shrimp's burrow. 
Vor! Vor! Stopp! Stopp, stopp, stopp! A colony of small file clams clings to the cave's wall, attached by filaments. And there's the mantis shrimp. The glaring light provokes it to examine the endoscope more closely. Weiter jetzt, weiter. 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 Stopp. Fast. Vor. Vor, vor. Stopp, stopp, stopp. Stopp. It slapped us. Geht. Vor. Vor, vor. Stopp. Stopp. Zack. Nummer. Another one. Vor. 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 Stopp. The mantis shrimp squeezes past the endoscope and heads upwards. During filming, the endoscope probed up to two meters deep into the burrows. A close-up of the swimming legs. There are five pairs. After the first shrimp disappears below again, another one appears with a half-digested lionfish in tow. Some mantis shrimp are monogamous. Supposedly, these partnerships last up to 20 years. The faceless killer. How dangerous is it for humans? It's just reported from fishermen when they catch mantis shrimps in the net uh, that they can hurt them. They are called sunbreakers because they're really strong and they could break your uh, bone. Uh, but no attacks on divers or some, the, something like that. The peacock mantis, if you go too close for them, there's the colorful ones, the beautiful ones. Sometimes with eggs, they're running around on the outside. They're not so stable in the, in the holes. And they, if you go too close with your camera, they can crack your, uh, your port or whatever. So they, if, if you go too close, they just hit you. Going by looks instead of size, the most terrible creatures of the sea would have to be these skeleton shrimp, because they grow only a few millimeters long. They're rarely noticed and never filmed. Their forelegs are used as grasping claws. They look like praying mantises or refugees from a science fiction film. The big male in the background drives off opponents and troublemakers. Up front, a somewhat intimidated-looking female. Skeleton shrimp are endemic in all oceans. They are spectacular and eerie, yet unknown to many divers. With a little imagination, it's possible to see something like the male's care and affection for his mate in this scene. What else does Lambe Strait have to offer? Apart from in a nightmare, are there creatures that can actually threaten human beings? The answer is absolutely. There's one that attacks without hesitation, easily slicing through wetsuits and whose bite contains enough venom to kill a human being which it's been known to do on rare occasions. Here it is in all its dreadfulness. The blue ringed octopus, 10 to 15 centimeters long. It displays its blue rings only when distressed, but then things get dangerous fast. This critter is so confident that it feels no need to retreat or hide and allows divers to get within a few centimeters. The blue ringed octopus is a perfect symbol of Lambe's extraordinary marine life. It's extremely small and has to be searched for laboriously. It's highly dangerous 
but at the same time remains both charming and fascinating. A likeable, creepy monster indeed. <laughs>